In this session, we're going to discuss keying. Keying is the art of selecting a color or an attribute of the image and using that to procedurally create a map, i.e. a green background. You remove the green to just leave what's left in the foreground. There are a couple different kinds of keys in Nuke. I like to categorize them as utility keys and then blue or green screen keys. For utility keys, it's something like a luminance keyer or a hue keyer or a difference keyer. And for blue and green screen, it's more of a plug-in style keyer where we use things like Keylight Ultimat, Primat, or the IBK Gizmo setup. Let's talk about some of the considerations when you're keying things. When most people think about keying, they think about edges and they think about a solid shape that they're creating. The thing is, cleaner isn't necessarily better. A lot of times when we're keying, we really want to keep our image as organic as possible. It's that organicness that helps it mesh with our backgrounds. So one of the things we're always dealing with is we're dealing with how constricted our key gets. We want to maintain that transparency, but we also want to remove the spill and we want to make sure that everything feels correct. You know, motion blur and transparency are a huge thing with that. Say someone's wearing a silk scarf that flaps in the wind and you can see through it. You want to try and maintain that transparency if you can. Or say something moves quickly and now you have transparency where the motion blur occurs. Another big thing that we want to talk about is noise and spill. This footage that I'm going to be using today was purposefully shot poorly. It's using a fairly noisy camera. It has lots of wrinkles. It is not at all the optimal green screen. But in real life, you're actually going to experience more green screens that look like this than ones that are perfectly smooth and well lit. You also want to think about color. You know, how things are integrating, how much color is being sucked out of your image, how color works relative to your screens. Sometimes you have the opportunity to influence how the keying is set up in production. So it's good to think about those things ahead of time. You know, in this case, we have a orangish, maybe a little bit reddish cat on top of a green screen. And it's a good thing to know that when you have a red object on a green screen, if you have any kind of edge transparency or motion blur, things tend to go a little brown and muddy in the boundary between the red and the green. We also really want to think about pre-multiplication and working over. You know, with keying, a lot of the tools are set up their own specific ways, and some of those ways sort of treat it like a all-in-one solution. You know, there's no such thing as a perfect key, in my opinion. You know, sometimes you do get a really, really good green screen and you can use the keyer and everything works exactly right, just like the manufacturer shows in their demos. But in real life, it's not really that simple and it rarely works that way. So knowing how to sort of break the keys apart and use them in ways that is smart and leverages what that keyer is specifically good at and knowing that maybe you need to combine different keys that have different properties. You know, here's an example where we have this footage and this is a key and you can see it's a little, it's a little funky. We have some noise, but if you look at one of these, you know, if you were just to look at the alphas of these, most people would say that this is maybe a better key than this one because we have a lot of extra stuff coming in. We're not getting rid of everything. But when you actually look at them, there's a little bit of, you can, you can see that there's a little bit more edge detail. There's a little bit more fidelity in some of this, even though we have the background coming through and we have the foreground still on top of the background, there are elements of this that actually make it a little bit more desirable. And we can modify that a little bit to make it better. You know, where if we look at this one where we really pushed it hard to make as clean of a edge as possible, it really starts to get a little bit funky and then you wind up using a blur, you soften it. And at the end of the day, the, the end result just isn't as organic as it could be. And everybody's seen keys like this. One of the other considerations I want to talk about is also how you put all these together. You know, we talked briefly about all of these keyers want to be one tool. They want to, they want you to input the background and input your mats and the end result is a composite. But the thing is, we're the compositors. I think we want to be able to control how it composites together. And that's where splitting hue correction and denoising and alpha generation really, you know, sh that should be your job. You should be controlling each of those separately because it allows you to use the best tools for each process. You know, so here's a little example key. 
And these aren't good keys, but it's more about how they go together. So here we're doing a simple spill suppression. We're pulling a key and then we're pulling another key just for maybe mat control. We're dilating it, we're softening it. And that's just to give us maybe a garbage holdout, you know, to help, help the other key do its thing. And then we're masking all that back against our main thing. So now we have this aspect. Well, say we have another piece here. If you were using a traditional keyer, you would pipe your background in, you would pipe your foreground in, and the output would be a finished product. Say you wanted to sandwich stuff in between there. Now you've got a little bit of a different problem where you're trying to figure out how to create different alpha streams and merge things together because they aren't pre-multiplied anymore and they don't exist in a pre-multiplied state where you can very easily layer them before you add them to your background. So here we have another shot on green screen. Similar process, we're pulling some keys on it. You can see here, you know, our, our keyers catching that band. We can even add roto in here. So we're just using some roto to do a little garbage matting. And then we're pulling that all together. Maybe this needs a little blur. We're then masking that against, and now we have our output. Maybe doing a little bit of extra work. Now we're adding our two keys together and then we're coming to our background. So that's kind of how you would set up multiple keys. You know, the idea is to generate that pre-multiplied over element so that they can then be very easily added together.